So Southampton have beaten Arsenal 3-2 in a brilliant game of St Mary's to win their first Premier League home game of the season. Under the new man, Hazen Hotel, Brian Kerr, they must be absolutely delighted. And that new manager bounce, I don't know how much you know about it from your own career and personal highlights, but it clearly had an effect today. Yes, indeed. Um, he obviously had the full week to work with the players this week and he had an impact. I believe they trained hard and they trained every day. There was a, a pattern about their play that was quite obvious, particularly in the attacking part of the pitch where you could see the work being done uh, to allow uh, Stuart Armstrong and Nathan Redmond to get into the game, picking up the ball in space off the, off the front, behind Danny Ings. Very effective getting the full-backs in the game. Valerie on the, the right-hand side, in particular, target on the other side of the pitch. Target, beautiful ball in for Danny Ings' goal, the headed goal. Then Redmond's for the second one, the vital one, just before half-time. That was very important to the result. Uh, they went in ahead. Where they able to keep the lead? Obviously, Mkhitaryan got, them back, got Arsenal back into the match. But in fairness, Shane Long added a bit to the, to the game when he came on. Charlie Austin got... Brilliant goal, another cross, another headed goal. You look at Arsenal's deficiencies at the back and they were, they were, I suppose, exposed badly today when you look at, at the structure of the three, three goals, the, the way they were created, all the headers where the defenders didn't see the attacker getting into position. Ings got in between the two centre-backs. Austin got in behind the two centre-backs as it happened in the second half when the Arsenal went to four. But it was a great win for Southampton. So Southampton are obviously the story today because it's a huge moment for them and it's a win that's got them out of the bottom three and it's the first match in charge at home for the new manager. But tell us about what your take is on Arsenal having watched them today because yes, Southampton created numerous opportunities. They scored three goals, but when you look at the injury list by the end of the game, they come into the game with the suspended uh, Mustafi and Socrates out of the match. They knew they'd lost holding for the rest of the season. We learned this morning that Saeed Kolasinac had gone out with tightness in his thigh. Half-time, Hector Bellerin has gone. Monreal looked like he was carrying a problem he's only come back from injury and Koscielny was starting his first Premier League game since April so throwing all of that into the mix how much can you read into what you saw from Arsenal today? Well you can read into it that they are deficient at the back um, it wasn't just today that they've conceded goals they've conceded plenty of goals this season but they've been able to do better at the other end and win games um, I think you threw out one during the game that they'd only had one clean sheet this season 16 games so now that's 17 games so you know I have felt any time I've seen them uh, even since Unai Emery's come in I still haven't felt that they've looked solid defensively I just I just don't think there's enough pace between holding Mustafi Socrates and that the goalkeeper whichever goalkeeper is played they haven't looked sufficiently reliable for me as yet and I said it to you early in the game or before the game that I thought that Arsenal were capable of giving up goals that Southampton were capable of scoring goals today even in talking about Arsenal as a team in the preview I said that I, despite the great work that you and Emery has obviously done there's no doubt about it. it's a higher tempo Arsenal there's a clearer a clearer emphasis on everybody's role. They all seem to know what they're about. There's a flexibility in the system, changing from three at the back to four at the back, or five, wing backs, or four, four, two, whatever it is. There's more, there's more variety in the game, but still that vulnerability defensively remains, even with the protection, protection that Torreira has given since he came into the team. Uh, Zach is in there as well. Guaduzzi, sometimes they play two, sometimes they play a three. Today they played two and Zach was at a centre-half position. So I think that vulnerability is still there, but they're a better team than they were last year. I mean, you know, again, you, you said during the comedy, they've won the same number of games already this year away from home than they won in the whole of last season. And they will win more games away this season it's an unfortunate circumstance today but it's of their own making that the two, two centre-halves are suspended you know Mustafi is suspended Socrates is suspended you get suspended because you're a boy and you, 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 <laughs> you've gathered five yellow cards in the in the, a certain number of games unfortunately for them it was two under one week so they're a bit short they've managed 
the Europa League thing, I think, quite well. And they've done well, it, it, you know, not using the players. None of the players played today, started the other night, I think. So they managed to keep both things going, the Premier League. But today's a bad blow. I mean, what's about for Arsenal is, can they finish third or fourth? They're not going to finish ahead of of the top two of, of Liverpool and Manchester City. And if they finish in the top four, it'll have been a very, very good season, given that there were six last season and outside the Champions League positions the season before as well. So that has to be the target. It'll be a great fourth season if they can get to that, and they can still well do that. Yeah, just a question on maybe some of the, the creative talents in that Arsenal squad it, it's now to be precise one away clean sheet in 18 Premier League games so as you say they're continuing to concede goals another three today but he left Mesut Ozil and Aaron Ramsey on the bench we don't know what Aaron Ramsey's future holds his contract expires at the end of the season Ozil was brought on for the last 15-20 minutes and there was one moment which maybe encapsulates why he's not in the team because when Arsenal needed him to get goals out and make a tackle he was too busy yapping at the referee do you see a future for either of those guys in Unai Emery's Arsenal? Um, well, it, it looks like Ramsey is on the way out because they've withdrawn the offer that they'd made him at some stage and he made uh, reference to the fact that he was he didn't know why, he hadn't been told why they withdrew that offer. I would suggest that it's because the manager is having some influence on that decision-making and he may have looked at the amount of money that's involved in that and said that could be better used used use for a player that I would like mm. who might be more reliable to play the way I would want. I mean, I like Ramsey. I think he's a very, very good player. But I think I looked through his appearances over recent seasons. And he, I think over the last four or five seasons, he's averaged about 20 league games, 20, 22 league games, which is not enough, I'd say, if he's on a player who will be highly paid, uh, I presume one of the best players in the co- club. So it looks like that decision has been made. But while he's here, I think while he's still at the club, they'll make the best use. I'm interested to see if they got if they got a strongish offer for him in January where they let him go. I think they will, could well do that. If they got something like 10 or 15 million for him, knowing that they'll get nothing for him in the summer. In the case of Ozil, uh, I, you remember where the fuss it was about the fact that Ozil re-signed last year when his contract was running down and it was getting near the time where he could talk to other clubs? And I, I, you know, I don't know what the figures are. We don't ever really know what the specific figures are. But I think he's the highest paid player of the club. Oh, yeah, and, definitely is. You know, after Sanchez went to to Manchester United for substantial money for a 300 grand a week. So, you know, again, unless he's producing on a regular basis, he has to be one that he may be sold in the future. If he's not playing, he can't be too happy himself. He didn't look particularly happy today. I thought he might try and buzz around, make an impact. He buzzed around to some degree, but didn't make an impact. Almost treaded the great ball through for uh, Lacazette late in the game. But, you know, that moment I described when you repeated there about him, he, 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 he lost possession just outside the box. And Torreira was down the ground, having got a bang on the hip. And he spent the next... 10 seconds while Southampton were trying to prod the ball through having a whinge at the referee and a, you know his concentration was gone in that moment they could have lost the goal and that's one of the issues with him to stay in the game and understand that your role you have to be on top of it every second of the game that's what this manager requires that's what he demands otherwise you're on the bench and he him and Ramsey are on the bench for uh, the reason Ramsey on the bench is probably it's about positioning about he doesn't see him as a reliable holder in the two but I think in the three I think he's probably better than Mkhitaryan though Mkhitaryan scored two goals today but obviously I don't see these players every day like the manager does so I bow to his knowledge but I must say I, 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 love, I really like Ramsey as a player when he's playing when he's fit okay, Brian thanks a million thank you